Even though many people think of three amoebas over, under, back, over, under, around, whatever you want to think about that, what actually starts it is the chasing hand, chasing underneath the other hand. You swing under, and that little two beat that my hand just did is what initiates the three beat. So it's going under back, that was the intro. Then it does a three beat, and you're locked in that three beat. You do it automatically with yourself, but when you're working with a partner, you need to be aware of that. Talk about who is going to be the initiator, or else you'll just keep getting all tangled up and confused. By the way, in reverse, everything's flipped upside down, so it would actually be over the top. Then we try it with a partner. We actually kind of broke it down even to a two beat, so we can just learn that intro. We had to communicate about who is going to initiate. So I'll be the initiator. I'm going to swing under and back. Do that a couple times. Under, back, hang out. You can even count. Count it off. One, two, three, and switch. One, two, three, and cross, whatever you want to call it. One, two, three, and cross. Once you get comfortable with that, you can continue it. Continuous two feet. Here we go. This is, of course, one half of a three beat game. You go over the ultimate you want to do with each other. All right, here we go. Here's another way to learn it. I'm going to initiate and cross underneath him, and then we're just going to stay with our arms crossed. Here we go. So, just staying here. Now we can do the arm stacking game. I'm underneath, and I want to get on top. So we just hang out for a second, then he goes, and I hang out, then I go. And if, once you get comfortable just doing the switch every once in a while, you can take the extra breather beats out. And then we're doing the three beat we facing each other. My left hand and the right hand, like Siamese poi twins. We got into stances. We're facing each other, but we're not connected here. We could do a move where we're back to front, or we can do back to back. Or we can do front to back, front to back. Do all those possibilities. Furthermore, we don't have to stand right lined up with each other. We can offset each, offset from each other. This cross stance sort of thing. I'm looking that way, he's looking that way. And our arms can interact in a new way. When we're standing like this, if you want to, like, if you want to use a yoga mat or just pick a wall that you're going to look at in your room that can help you get oriented. So I'm going to spin drawing a circle on the wall in front of me. It's kind of behind Dan. And he's drawing in front of him, which is kind of behind me. And we want to make sure our poi, if they're, they were wheels, are rolling in the same direction. So both of our poi wheels are rolling that way. And now Dan has the easiest way to initiate by just hopping over my hand and drawing it through. It's like Dan saying, hey, John's arm, come over here. And I say, no, I'm going to go back here. You, you come over here. My wall's better. No. No, 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 no. Seriously, my wall's way better. No, the field can be French girls. French girls, huh? I got a contact here. All right, and you do a little of that, and you're doing a four-beat cross dance weave. Important keys with the four beat cross dance weave. We want to be far enough apart this way, offset from each other, and instead of being like heel to heel, we want to have stepped back just a little bit so that there's room in between our legs so we don't hit each other. And you want to focus on making your cross points hit the ground or the ceiling, like you're hitting a golf ball and ringing a bell. This is what I mean by that. So go ahead and start out. Golf ball, bell. I cross and hit the golf ball, I cross and ring the bell and our arms twist around each other at about shoulder height. A version of the three beat where we're back to front, and the person in the front has a slightly more complicated job. So go ahead and initiate. Dan basically does the exact same thing, the person in the back. The person in the front has to, their, their elbow's pointing the wrong way. They have to flip behind them, behind them, back around in front. Behind, behind, back around in front. Once you get the hang of it, it's basically the same as the 3-beat weave. And from here, you can start folding between stances as though you were handcuffed by your weave. And the whole, when you change stances, you need to step when the poi aren't there. It's like Indiana Jones dodging subways of doom.
So when our poi go behind Dan, I can step out in front here. So here it comes. And we're going to cross it. And that one's pretty easy. We're going from a three beat to a four beat move. So we have all this extra time for one beat's worth of time. So the step back is kind of fast if you drop from 4 beat to 3 beat. And it's the same idea. When I go over to get behind him, that's when I step behind him. And he immediately comes out in front of me. To really break this transition down, I go up and over Dan's arm to the other wall. And when I do, I just leave my coil on that wall for an extra beat as I step in front of him. So here it comes. I cross over, leave my poi there, and he comes in front. And only then, when he's come in front of me, do I start to weave. If you, if you go any earlier, you'll get ahead of yourself, you'll get tangled up, or you'll just come apart. What else did we do? That was the meat of it. Is there any, any other points I think that folding was it. Yeah, okay. That was a whole, whole bunch. I totally...